So let's say we've got a tricep injury here. That's the back, back muscle here on the dog. And what I'm going to do is I know he's, it's the tricep because when I extended this leg, the dog reacted. Also, when I extended this leg, it wasn't nearly as far, or it was much short, you know, it wasn't nearly as far as the other leg. I compared it to see. This leg went that far, the other leg went straight out with his neck. So I know we've got an injury back here because injuries cause, cause shortening. Shortening leads to less range of motion, all right? So I know it's going to be back here. So what I'll start is I start at the bottom and work my way to the top because it works best for me. I start with the tendons going to the elbow, and I just work my way up following the muscle. They usually like it. You can see how he relaxed and his leg went forward because who doesn't dig a massage, right? <laughs> Everybody likes that. But when you find that spot that's not right, all of a sudden he'll just do this or it'll start to tremble underneath your fingers. And to me, the key with trying to find an injury is how much pressure I put against my corresponding, from my thumb to my fingers. We're not trying to squeeze and break something. We're just putting pressure to put pressure on, period. We want to put pressure on our own arm so when we take it off, there might be a little white splotch, but not something that lasts a long time. So we're just putting gentle pressure on until this dog reacts. Once I locate that lump, I make sure it's real by comparing it to the other leg. I still always do it just so I'm not going crazy. And then I go back to that lump and I start to work it out, okay? We start massaging it from bottom to top, top to bottom. In a few minutes, you're going to think, am I in the right spot? because you worked it out. You worked the swelling out of that injury. Now, there's still a muscle injury, but we got that swelling out by gentle massage in some direction, okay? We're trying to squeeze it out, and they like that. So we massage that muscle out, and then I massage the whole shoulder because often the rest of the muscles are very tense, but I localize the injury, and then I make, start to make them feel good, okay? So we worked out that chestnut, all right? And then what I'm gonna do, put a lot of liniment on there, massage the heck out of this tricep, and I'm gonna put a shoulder jacket on. I find of the three chest muscle injuries, or shoulder injuries I should say, the tricep is one we can continue in a race in, the other two we're done, okay, more times than not. And I'd love to hear the, the opinions of uh, Lance and Robert on those too, uh, but that's my experience is usually we can keep going with the triceps, often the whole way, sometimes not, but the other two, once they, we, we incur those, we're shot with that dog, okay. But again, if in doubt, leave them out. I'm going to show you these shoulder jackets that I'm a firm believer in using heat. And I was of the, uh, of the teachings of using lots of ice for injuries, but it, it just doesn't work that way with shoulders in my hands. These shoulder packs, or shoulder jackets, you put those little chemical heat packs in, and I'm sure you've seen them, but I've been able to help a lot of dogs out by using these, and that they have the heat packs, one for the shoulder here, and then the other one for the chest. There's nothing wrong with using these at every checkpoint if you've got enough handlers or help or money to do it, but when you're trying to treat them, to me, this is a key with getting a shoulder back is using heat. And to me, how do I get heat to stay here? I've tried duct taping them and everything else, but any jacket with a pocket or you take a t-shirt and sew a pocket in there, if we can leave that chemical pack on there, I leave it on forever, okay? At the whole checkpoint, if I'm trying to heal a dog up at home, I'm going to use that jacket on that dog all day. I'll go out and switch it after 18 hours when that chemical pack goes bad and then continue on that. And I can shorten up the, the healing time typically by half, all right? And I know when I'm, I'm doing them justice, I'm not trying to mask the injury. I'm trying to fix it. And heat makes a huge difference. If you have a shoulder injury at home, don't just stick this dog in a chain and forget about him. If you got the time, go back and massage this through every day, all right? It really does help to work that chestnut out. They heal much, much faster. Any questions on the shoulder? What's your opinion on shoulder injury? <laughs> sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Yeah. If you know, uh, when you do the long distance race, if you are three hours in the in the check and then you go. Yeah. It's a time constraint that often is your limiting factor in a distance race. But when I'm trying to fix a shoulder, I really want to have a six-hour layover to see if I can get this to work. And sometimes you're afforded that, sometimes not. If you're not afforded enough time, I'd leave them behind. So, like I say, wrist four hours, shoulder six hours, and then I reevaluate and decide if I want to keep that dog going. And if not, leave them behind and have somebody else do that while you're, while you're up on the trail. Rough set. <laughs>